I'm Daniel German. I'm Associate Professor of Computer Science at the University of Victoria. So why did I get into computer science? I never wanted to be in computer science. Um, when I was in high school, I was taught that computers were just too simple, that anybody could actually learn to program. I wanted to continue receiving a scholarship. And to do that, I had to register in this university. And the, other, the only field that interested me was um, information sciences at that point. Well, in the morning, I was going to um, physics engineering. In the afternoon, I was actually going and taking programming classes in this other school. And after one year, I decided that the money was in information sciences, not in physics engineering. So that's where I am now. <laughs> Very unexpected, but um, I think that um, it was just pure serendipity, and I'm happy that I'm here. Now, my research, I define it in terms of a triangle. At the main apex, I always put software evolution. What do I mean by software evolution? I actually want to see whether the historical record of software development can be useful to drive the future of that project or to actually teach us something about how we develop software so we can actually learn from that for new projects. Um, interestingly enough, because software evolution depends on historical records, I have moved into open source, mainly because if you want to find um, histories of software development, that's just the easiest way to do it. And uh, so this actually brings me to the second apex of, of the triangle, which is open source um, software engineering. And um, I'm particularly interested about uh, open source software engineering because um, it is very, very peculiar way of, of developing software. You change the economic constraints of software development and create an environment in which people are willing to uh, give their, um, their intellectual property, their work, towards a common goal. Also, the fact that uh, you have so many different uh, projects, it, it makes it very, very interesting to actually compare um, different, um, we call them communities, the people around the project, um, become the community that, that, that cares for it and develops it, and how these communities actually interact between themselves, how projects evolved over time. We have projects now that they're more than 20 years old. The last part of the triangle is intellectual property. And um, in my opinion, you cannot define open source without um, dealing with the issues of intellectual property. So open source, in, 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 in my opinion and of many, is defined by what we call open source licenses. And up to now, nobody has really cared about how the legal aspects of, of intellectual property affect software development. In my opinion, this is very peculiar because it creates specific constraints that are not technological. Um, they are not functional requirements, but they are requirements nonetheless. Um, if you're told that you cannot use library A, then you cannot use it in period. And uh, these are typical constraints that we are not really used to deal in, in, in software engineering. Um, for example, how um, some video and music players are able to actually integrate codecs that they might be illegal in some places. So, so how does, does my research uh, interest affect my teaching? Um, one interesting thing about open source also is that it becomes a very interesting uh, ground for learning. Uh, you can if you don't know a technology, you can always find some project that is using it and participate at any kind of level. Photography was my first job ever when I was a high school um, student. And I've always liked it and, um, and I have been kind of torn between pursuing that and doing computer science. Um, but what has become interesting is that um, photography has has suffered a huge change in the last 20 years. It has been moved from the discipline of the chemist into the discipline of the computer scientist. And then I started moving into uh, different disciplines of, of digital photography. And uh, so my goal every year is to have one paper that goes out that has something to do with digital photography. So another, another important area that I have been working on is interdisciplinary studies here at the University of Victoria. Um, the reality is that um, we are becoming sort of like mathematics and English, that almost any discipline has to learn something from us. I have been collaborating with Ray Siemens, for example, he's a CRC chair in, in digital humanities at the University of Victoria. And he's particularly interested in the issue of, of electronic reading. Electronic reading is, is one of those 
core examples in which people a few years from now will not even actually notice that they have a computer in front of them. The same way that we see today a microwave oven and we don't think of it as a computer. I'm interested, of, of course, in the issues of art and the computer and um, in what we call today computational aesthetics. And, and of course, that has to do a lot with the visual work that I do, with the photography that I do. I work with um, Eric Higgs, who is leading the Mountain Repeat Project, which is a project to try to repeat the photographs that were made of the Rocky Mountains a hundred years ago for the purpose of doing cartographic maps. And those are not trivial, partially because a hundred years ago the photographs were made in glass plates. Today they are using high-tech uh, digital cameras uh, in color uh, compared to black and white as in the past. There are also interesting problems in terms of storage. How do you store a photograph so you can actually retrieve it effectively? It will be nicer to be able to say, I want this point in the Rockies. Which are the photographs that are including it? And then suddenly have all of that automatically retrieved. One of the factors that attracted me to the University of Victoria was the fact that it had a very strong software engineering research group. So how similar? We have Jens Yankee, we have Peggy Story, Melanie Tori, we have uh, Yvonne Cody, Daniela Damien. Dan Hoffman used to be very involved in software engineering. He has moved slightly now to um, networks, but he's still considered an important person in software engineering and myself. And they were relatively known given the, um, in the world, given the size of the university. And I think that uh, our department, even the size of, of it with respect to the rest of the ones in the country, is very well recognized and, and considered within the software engineering community in the world. Mm -hmm.